Hey, hey, family. I want to give uh, all honor and all praise to Heya Heya, you know, for for this beautiful Sabbath night. You know, um, I was checking out um, King Drop video, you know, and um, <laughs> something came to me, you know what I'm saying, when I was looking at it, when he was talking about the Aztecs, you know, and um, I left a comment about it, but uh, we're going to get into it, and then we're going to go on this little ride, okay? So I just want to thank y'all for tuning in. I want to say, hey, what's up to all my subscribers? I want to say, hey, to my untalkedness, indigenous, Hebrews. How y'all doing, family? It's been a long time coming, but we are waking up to who we are. We are waking up to who the creator is, you know. We was made and we was created for something great, for something greater than what we see. There's more to this than what our eyes show us, okay? So let's get to it. Talking about the exodus. So what does that mean to you to make an exodus? First, you have to believe and be convinced that you were in <clears throat> captivity. And Harriet Tubman even told you, she said, man, I freed a thousand slaves. Could have freed thousands. I freed hundreds of slaves. Could have freed thousands more, man. That's 432 to drop that library. That's at 432 to drop.com. Check out the library. In a system of captivity. And how do you exit us out of that? Well, we begin with getting the power. We get the, we get the knowledge. We get the power. We get the knowledge. We get the power. We got the drop. Dig on it right here. Let's go back into some of this knowledge of the forbidden histories of America. I'm going to, you know, use this to uh, connect this uh, Ark of the Covenant among the Aztec. Go right into uh, uh, chapter 14. We're in page 120 of the actual book itself, 127 of the uh, PDF document. Chapter 14, go throw it right into Wah, wah, existence. Hey, 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 Try it, man. See how good it feels. My sisters, my brothers. Hey, hey, ya. hey, ya. hey, ya. hey, ya. How yes, indeed. Yes, so hey, ya. everything, everything. Hey, ya. How, how does that feel to you? Does it feel all right? Does it feel like we're just talking a breath? A covenant of existence? Yeah. Ark of the covenant among the Azteca. There are many legends and tales from the Native American Indian what would have undoubtedly undoubtedly placed the Ark of the Covenant among them. But what would have undoubt, undoubtedly placed the Ark of the Covenant among them, the Native Americans. You keep hearing about this Ethiopia situation, but you are the Ethiopians. You are the Ethiopians. You're in the Indians, my people. Remember what Ronald Sanders told you in the Lost Tribes of Promised Land in the fine print. That's why I said we got to keep digging on the fine print. Don't just read to read and see, oh, we read this many books. Nah, I'll take as long as it takes to get the babies out. Let's go to the fine print. We're just talking about Prester John, the letter of Prester John. In fact, the Prester John letter may have, may at least in part have Jewish roots or Israelite roots, Hebrew roots. We're just talking Ethiopia. Uh, we're talking about the four rivers of Eden, the Gihon, compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. But which Ethiopia? Even in the Buddhist 
uh, you know, document that we got comparing the Israelites and the Buddha and all that. It even, you know, told you there that Ethiopia, I mean, there's an Ethiopia of the West and the Ethiopia of the East, of the Orient. There were two Ethiopias according to that, but let's just go, let's go. It said, this confused geography, I get it any bigger for my people, so as big as it gets. All right, it's a fine print, y'all, so we, oh, there we go. Okay, okay. Thank you. Wow, wow. Remember, hey, hi, wow. Hey, hi, wow. Yeah, I think that covers all the frequency, don't it? This confused geography has ancient and honorable roots. The first verse of the book of Esther describes the realm of the Persian king Azorius, Azorius whose palace also was at Susa, as extending from India even unto Ethiopia. Right, so you got the triggered globe in your in your head, and I say India, you got a place, right? You got a place for the India, for India. But has India always had a place? You got a place for Ethiopia in your head on that map that they brainwash you with. But does Ethiopia have a place, or are we talking about descriptive, descriptors, things that are just describing a bigger meaning than one place on the map. India, Ethiopia, India, Ethiopia. Where's India? Where's Ethiopia? Is it where they told you it is? When will you stop believing the oppressive lies manipulated, systematically instilled the graven images you've always been forced to look at and look at every day on the television. Television. From India even unto Ethiopia in Greek and Roman authors, there is a similar vagueness. Right? Just talking about the vagueness. About a vast region taken in by terms like India and Ethiopia. My people, keep this fresh, fresh on your hearts. Because we're not just reading this stuff so we can intellectualize it. Wisdom has nothing to do with your mind, people. Wisdom has nothing to do with your brain, people. Wisdom is the vibration you feel when you know you're walking straight. Wisdom is the vibration you feel when you know you're walking crooked and you're like, I'm smarter than this. Mm-hmm. I feel it, man. I feel that I'm better than this. I'm better than this title. I'm better than that title. The title of India or Indian, the title of Ethiopia, none of this stuff is stuff you check off because it's a vagueness. Whatever it systematically means, whatever it systematically is forced to reveal for that temporary systematic purpose of similar vagueness. We're just talking India or Ethiopia. In Greek and Roman authors, Greek and Roman authors, there is a similar vagueness about a vast region taken in by terms like India and Ethiopia. What does it mean? Where is it? It's vague. The latter, even in its narrowest sense, so Ethiopia, the latter, so Ethiopia, even in its narrowest sense, comprising a much larger area than present-day Ethiopia, <coughs> so even in its most narrow sense, this term Ethiopia comprises a much larger area than that present day area called Ethiopia. Even if you just look at it narrowly, but let's widen the scope. Let's widen our perspective of this Ethiopia, this vast region, this vagueness. And beginning just south of the first cataract of the Nile and its relationship with the better known Persia in an apocryphal or secret acts of St. Thomas, the apostle moves easily between Persia and India. He's just doing his thing back and forth from Persia and India. And Persia's just talking about Iran, and Iran is what's also 